Hey everyone, I have an exciting show for you today. I have invited a guest who reached out to me just to ask some questions and I said, hey, you know what? Let's get on a Zoom call so we can not only answer her questions but potentially help others uh, that have similar questions. Uh, so Sarah reached out to me. She has an Instagram channel called Nerds Guide to Wellness. Check it out, that's how she reached out to me and contacted me. So let's welcome Sarah to the show. How you doing, Sarah? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking my call today. I like that we're doing this. So. Oh, excellent. Why don't you first off introduce uh, the audience to who you are and tell us a little bit about your Instagram page. Um, so my name is Sarah and I um, started out anonymously in the world of Instagram and I just, I guess, like yesterday added my last name. So I'm so slowly getting out of the anonymity phase of things. <laughs> um, and so I started this account to get out of debt originally. And so we started out being like very intense Dave Ramsey people yep. and realized that once we started going, the power of what we could do with our finances and how it really changed our lives and had a strength in our marriage at the time. And we were kind of rocking it. So we're like, let's keep going. And then um, me and my husband just started talking a lot and he's, we're the same age. So we're both 30 years old. Okay. Um, and so I think we were 26 and he was like complaining about knee and back pain already <laughs> in his day job. And I'm like, this is terrible. Like we are t in our twenties. Like it's going to go, it's going to go downhill quick if we don't figure yeah. something else out. <laughs> oh, that like, is oh my back. I'm like, yeah. this is, we're going to have fun when we're old. And <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to hear so, any complaining from him. He's not allowed to complain <laughs> to me. I, I got decades on him. Oh, that's funny. All oh right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but so, we uh, were like, okay, obviously his job, we don't love that aspect of it. It's really physical. And okay. so we started thinking about ways to get out of it. And I mean, I think we're both kind of entrepreneurial, but I'm not like an inventor. Like I'm not going to make anything crazy. Right. And so what can we do? And real estate is a very tangible thing. And that's mm -hmm. how we kind of moved into that and learned about the world of fire and financial independence. And yeah, we're going right along. Yeah. So we just kind of took the momentum of paying off debt and started buying houses instead. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, I'm, this ought to be a fun conversation. It's funny. I just did an interview with Anna Kelly that's uploading literally right now talking about Dave Ramsey because we got a bunch of questions. So it'll be interesting to yeah. see where this conversation goes. So uh, again, you yeah. reached out. Um, always say yes when people ask, especially if we can record it. So why don't you, uh, yeah. we, there's no flow. Why don't you go ahead and ask questions, set it up however you like. Let, let's see what happens. Yeah, I, well, now that we started recording this video, I was like, oh my gosh, I should prepare something formal. So I wrote down some ideas. Okay. <laughs> so we're really new to real estate. Um, and it's kind of always been my husband's dream. And then I realized that as we started doing it, I realized that real estate is a lot more like spreadsheets and running numbers than I thought versus being like hands-on, like we do hands-on renovations. Like I think that's what people kind of follow us for is watching us tear apart our one house. Um, <laughs> Because that's an adventure. Sure. Um, yeah, if you want to watch us take a roof off a house, you can watch that in my stories. It's saved. Um, but yeah, so we started doing that. And I realized like the money and like the cash flow aspect and the actual like leaving your day job will yeah. come from like the numbers more so yeah. than the renovate. Like buying smart on the front end is probably more important and that mm -hmm. it fit more with my skills. And so I got really excited about real estate once I figured out that I could do a lot from my desk. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. One the the one thing that I teach or I talk about all the time is you only have to answer one question to change your life. And that question is this. What is a bad, average, good or great deal in my market, whatever market, whatever you choose from. And if you could focus yeah. on under and understanding only good and great deals, uh, your life's going to be fundamentally better. And and then the other reality is that 99% of the stuff listed or available is bad or average, right? So if yeah. you can really learn your market, right? Spend the time. I looked at my market every day for 10 years. I mean, it takes dedication. You can do it from your screen. Absolutely. Right. Um, but if you only, if you get the average and then you start to, you know, if average is say 6% and you can only do yeah. seven, eight, 9% deals, your, your future is bright. Uh, so that's what I talk about all the time. So you're right. The the most important part is the buy. Um, yeah. After that, it's. I guess that's kind of my getting started. But the why I wanted to talk to you today was uh -huh. really. So we kind of started this ball rolling and mm -hmm. got a little. I'm like, I don't know if we got carried away or just excited and just bought. Like we bought four houses in a year and a half. Okay. Um, and so we just 
kind of moved really quickly through it. And I've like talked to people on Instagram and messaged people and like read a bunch of blogs. And that's really, we kind of self-taught ourselves everything off the internet. Okay. And so what I've been trying to do is pause for a minute and talk to some people that have made it through like 2008 successfully or yes. people that have done this for longer to see where we are today and what we should do next steps with our portfolio okay. so we know like where to go because I don't know, my dad sits around worrying that we're moving too fast and scaling up. And then I read these like other like finance bloggers and you get on bigger pockets at all. And it's like, people are buying like a hundred units a day and it's just ridiculous. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting here with four thinking, are we making good choices? So that's- yeah. Well, there's a- run Yeah, so, so <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So a couple of things. First and foremost, um, this bigger is better mantra that was first pioneered by Grant Cardone has been picked up by bigger pockets is a big pile of whatever you want to call it. Right. I don't want to swear. Cause then YouTube will be polite. Punish me. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's horrible advice. Uh, and for the, for the record, you know, I've been doing this 20 years. Bigger is better was financially right for the first 15 years of my career. It was the cash flow was better. It is not today. Yeah. It is absolutely the worst investment today uh, in most markets to buy a value add apartment building or multifamily. The deals are skinny. They won't make sense. They will not survive the next downturn. They're that skinny. Uh, second, I fundamentally spend you, most- Is it because the margins just aren't there? Yeah, they're, they're mar yeah margins aren't there. Expenses are either, uh, either they're lying or they're idiots. You can pick whichever one you want. Um, you know, when you see expense yeah. ratios on an apartment building at 25%, you're either lying or you're an idiot. And I don't care which one you choose. I have those and they never run lower than 42%. Um, I've got decades of, of owning them. So don't, don't try to play this game with me of saying 25%. It just doesn't work. The other thing I spend most of my time today, be, and I put it out almost probably three or four times a week, is you can fundamentally change your life getting four to 10 single family homes. They are, they are better investments today. The debt structure is better. What is not talked about is commercial debt, which is multifamily. They have three, five, or seven-year terms, and there will be a refinance period in the future. Uh, cap rates will be higher, which will mean the value will be lower, and most people are going to have to bring equity to the table to do their refinance. You don't have to do that with houses. You can go get 30-year money at 3 4 5%. And when, if rates go up to 10, who cares, right? You're fixed at 5% or, or lower. So um, I think you're doing absolutely the right thing. I think you are going maybe a little too fast. Again, I don't know you. I mean, we've we, talked for We feel seven. you on that. Yeah. Um, I would definitely hit a, hit, hit, hit a pause because it, it sounds like not only did you buy four houses, but it sounds like you bought four fixers if you're ripping off roofs and stuff. Is that true? Um, we have a little bit of a smattering. The first one was turnkey. Okay. The second one, we ripped a roof off of, and then the third one is um, was like a moderate amount. I think we put six thousand in it in the course of okay. two months. Well, let's talk about let's let's ready. talk about some numbers. Let's talk about the first and the third. So, what was the first deal? I mean, okay. Roughly, I'm getting my spreadsheet out. Ah, I like it. She's got it all written down. I'm cheating. <laughs> that, that's okay. Let me pull it up on my other screen. I have dual monitor, so if you see me glance around, it's. That's okay. Yeah, I have all this stuff. I work out of my home, so. Um, yeah, so, well, interesting. We've done two live-in flips to get to this point also. Okay, so the um, first so turnkey. Like that's like an important. So the first turnkey house was 78,000. Okay, 78K. Already had a tenant, hence turnkey? No, it, oh, was, so it was a vacant. single, like a resident. Did you live in it or did you rent it out? We rented it out. All right, what'd you rent it for? Um, it's at 770. Okay. So 770. It's okay. Change. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we got seven, a little overly excited in our first house. <laughs> it, it happens to everybody. You've got to get started. Getting started and learning is very important. Uh, but hold, so did you right. do 30 year money, 30 year debt? Um, so we started out doing a 20 year. Ah, okay. What was the rate? Um, fixed. What uh, was 6.1%. Oh, that's high. Okay. What year was this? It was high. 2008. Oh, so wow. September. Okay. 2008 or 18? 18. Sorry. Goodness gracious. Oh, I was say. <laughs> yes, 2018. <laughs> there's a one in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a one. Okay. So, um, so you've owned this now a year? 
a more than a year? Yeah. How's it been? Um, we just renewed their lease in October. So same tenant. Did you yeah. raise did you raise rent? Yep. Um, so it was at 750 and we moved it to 770. Okay, so it was 750 when you bought it. Okay. Uh, how how was the year? Any surprises with repairs? You know, any drama? How was it? Um, so we, the sump pump broke in this, like, so it, we live in Indiana. And so mm -hmm. we have Michigan basements mm -hmm. is a thing around here. I don't know if you're familiar. That's like a term that not everyone has heard of. I've learned off of Instagram. People are like, <laughs> what is a Michigan basement? And essentially it's like they built a random basement with stones okay. and like call it like, that's kind of what your house is built on. And it's kind of scary. Um, <laughs> And so anyway, this, uh, we had a sump pump in there that broke and then the water got up to like the furnace and the water heater. And so oh, no. we had to replace the water heater. All right. So that, so, so an extra thousand or 1500 in surprise repairs. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, yeah, probably under a thousand dollars. Okay. So let's call it a thousand bucks. Okay. All right. So and again, the furnace was repairable, and the water heater actually ended up being repairable. Like my husband learned how to do that on his own and like removed the sludge out of it. And it's like a whole thing and it's I have videos thing? of it that are on Instagram. <laughs> wow. If you want to see what sludge and water heater looks like, there are videos. Uh, well Instagram. I'm gonna be going to the I'm gonna be going to the nerd's guide to wellness to check out what sludge looks like after this interview. So that that'll be cool. It's under house two because house one is what we're living in right now. That's our flip house. But, okay. So house two, yeah. I'm gonna check that out. Okay. Uh so for so the reason I ask all these questions is because uh, I believe people got to execute got to get the first one. And then I typically tell them to sit tight for six months. It's you know, like when people ask, I say, sit tight. Yeah. Uh, because I want yeah. you to experience this. Even buying turnkey, you're going to have surprises, i.e. a Mer Michigan basement is going to have a sump pump go, which is going to do this, it's going to do that. Yeah. And some people can't handle it, right? They're like, oh my God, I mm -hmm. thought I bought a turnkey and all this stuff. I mean, life happens, man. Come on. I mean, you know, yeah. all this stuff. Uh, it sounds like you have a decent tenant, which isn't always the case. If you've read our story at all, our first tenant didn't work out. Um, so right, I did. I read your book on last week. Oh, nice. Well, you have to write your review now. You gotta and you gotta take I a do. picture it of it good. and push it on Instagram. Come on, help me out. I will do that for you. Thank you. It was helpful. Yeah. Oh, good. So and I got uh, us connected. So there you go. Read. <laughs> there you go. So uh, so again, I would call you at this point an experienced landlord. So that's a checkbox, right? Because you've experienced unexpected hey. things. You've raised rents. You've had a tenant for that long. Um, did, did you put 20% down or what would you put down on this first one? Yeah, 20%. Okay. All right. Have yeah, you 20%. Have you refied it at all or is it still the same loan? We have refied it. Okay. So now it's a 30 year loan? Now it's a, it's a portfolio loan. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And so it's a 20 year, but on a, like it, we can refinance it six years okay. all right. or it's like a six. All right. Hour. What's your, what's your intention for the property? Is That's okay. I know what you're talking about. I do this all the time. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, it's like an arm. <laughs> yeah, I got you. In six years, they could raise the, you know, yeah, your interest rate. But yeah. right now, it's a great interest rate. Okay. So sub five when you say great? Yes, it okay. was. Yeah, it's a. Oh, no. It's at 5.2, but better right. than the 6.1 we were yeah. at. All right. That's fine. Okay. So what, when you look at this property, what is your intention as of today? Do you want to own this until you're 65 or what, what, what is your intention when you bought it? We want to keep it as long as possible. We love it. So. Okay. So silly question again. A little again. bit of emotional lie. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, it's cute. Oh, I hate that answer. It's cute. Cute doesn't pay the I bills. I know. We've gotten much better at cute. The, the next ones are not cute. So. Uh, that's just about the numbers. It's your spreadsheet. So silly, silly question. Why wouldn't you put this on a 30-year 30 30 year fixed rate loan? Why, why wouldn't you do that? Is your credit or debt um, history? We were, Go ahead. We were reluctant Dave Ramsey followers uh -huh. that are scared of 30 <laughs> Oh, my God. Dave Ramsey, you're keeping people broke. Uh-huh. Because it hurts your cash flow. And like I literally have been messaging people now today being like, Dear God, take out a 30 year loan. You need to get a I don't know why we didn't. Yeah, well, Dave Ramsey's keeping you poor. That's that's actually the video that's mm -hmm. uploading right now on my channel. First off, let me just full disclosure. I love Dave Ramsey for what he does with debt pay down, snowball, 
wants versus needs. We would not be here without him. Yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it. But you are freaking keeping people poor, telling them not to either pay cash for stuff or 50, you're killing people. With interest rates sub 5%, fixed for 30 years, frankly, you're an idiot not to get those if you can, right? There are some people like myself who can't because I own so much real estate, I can't get those loans. So I have to do portfolio loans, which are different terms. So can, are you in a position where you could go get a 30 year loan? Do you actually step back? Do you have 30 year fixed rate loans on any of your properties? All three of our current rentals are held in the portfolio loan. And then our primary residence is on a 15 year. <laughs> but we're going to rent it out. So we probably need to refi what we're living in to a 30 before we move. Yes, please do that. You're going to get the best rates. You're going you're gonna to get something with a three on it right? For your yeah. primary residence. So put it just, just so people realize how I look at these numbers, right? So let's just assume you got 3.5%. I'm just putting that number out there. You're going to be getting a right. tax write-off for about a percent of that, right? So now your effective interest is two and a half percent. You're going to, uh, in inflation, even if you don't believe the numbers is running at 2%. So you're really paying mm-hmm. a half percent on this debt, which basically what you're doing is you're hedging the dollar. The bank is taking Mm -hmm. all the risk. If you have a 30-year mortgage with a three on it, the bank is taking the risk. We will eventually have a recession. Rates will eventually be back at 6%. You're going to be sitting there smiling ear to ear for 30 years with a three on your mortgage. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Go do that. What rate is, what are, what rates are you hearing people get right now? For owner occupied? For like... Yeah. I don't know Indiana, but I hear people routinely get 3.75, 3.8 today. We have stupidly good credit and a very good W2 income, so they tend to like us. Yeah. Okay. So that so do that on your <laughs> you don't carry any personal debt. You look really nice. Yeah. To yeah. lenders. Yeah. So. so stop it. Go. I mean, just your your cash flow is gonna go up instantly. Go get a 30-year yeah. loan. It's fine. And if you really are so Dave Ramsey like just pay more write the check if the if the payment's 434 write yeah. it for 500 fine ah oh, just mm-hmm. crazy but then it sticks you at the 15 year like you don't have a choice and i think that's what we i like the flexibility of a 30 year and that's yeah. what i would do differently telling people now okay good but all right so let's so that's what we're going to do uh Sarah. old habits hard to break that's okay <laughs> that's all right you know again Dave Ramsey got you where you are today you know give him all the credit in the world but right now he's keeping you broke so we'll just fix that. Uh, so, okay, we're going to do that on the owner-occupied house. Uh, so why, why a portfolio loan? Because you probably can still get individual investment loans. Why did you do a portfolio loan? Um, we, so after we got into the, the third house we bought that yep. was the rip the roof off and holy moly, this is a lot of work. Um, we realized that to get the rent we wanted out of that property. Sure. Um, it would probably have to sit vacant for a while. Uh, And so we found the fourth house we bought probably sooner than we should have bought it, but we wanted it. We knew we could get it up and cash flowing Mm -hmm. right away. And so house two and house four combined pay the mortgages, taxes, and insurance on all four properties. Got it. Okay. All right. So we bought house four in a hurry to let us have the duplex open and have it not crush our dreams. Got it. Okay. Um, and well, that's, so that's... in order to buy the fourth house, we did the portfolio because we used the equity in the other two houses to purchase it with less money down. Totally get it. Makes solid logic. How's the duplex to rip the roof off now? Is it rented yet or is it still not done? Um, our other inherited tenant just moved out. The roof is still ripped off of the one side and we're about to start remodeling the other side. Okay. So, so when do you expect that to be cash flowing as you planned? The good side that doesn't need the roof. Okay, so it's a weird duplex. It's two single family homes. They stuck a breezeway between and called oh. it a duplex. Okay, that's fine. They're different I, ages. I own, yeah, I own stuff like that. Okay. So yeah. back to and the so question. One we're side in- is decent and we're going to go through it and it should be rented out this summer. But when's the, and when's the problem? And once it's rented out, it, mm-hmm. it'll cash flow. On one side? Yeah. One side will cash flow... So when are you going to fix? We because, bought. Yeah. When are you going to fix the other side? When's the when? When are you going to fix that one? 
probably um, spring of 21. What, I'm confused. You have a or like roof, winter. You have a roof off, and you're in Indiana. Isn't that like bad for weather? No, we have a roof on it now. Oh, okay. It's on it. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm envisioning. We had to a, roof it to ensure it. Of course. <laughs> okay, that makes. So what's why? So is that rented? The, no. The, why not? It's okay. So the side with the bad roof. Yeah. We had we only re-roofed it because insurance said, "Dear sure. God, this is terrible," and we said, right. "Yes." insurance we would like to insure it because the other side still has a unit or a renter okay. in there okay. she moved out this month got it so this is the first month or next month will be the first one without cash flow so she just moved out okay and we're going to renovate her side first makes sense and then once we have the cash back up again because we move at the speed of cash like sure. after we renovate her side get the the nicer unit rented out this summer Okay. Um, we're going to save up money through the fall and then like January, February of 2021, we're going to renovate the bad side. Okay. So what are you expecting the renovation on the bad side to be? Is it like 10 grand or what, what, how bad is it? 30. 30. All right. So this is a full on, is it like a two bedroom, three bedroom? How big is this thing? Um, it's a two, well, right now it's whatever we want it to be because it's oh. a shell. Oh, it's a um, shell. Okay. What's it going to be? But it'll probably be a two bedroom and I would like to do a bath and a half. Okay, what what where what rent would you get out of that? Twenty one hundred. All right, just just um, that like side. Twelve hundred ish. Twelve hundred. Yeah, twelve hundred. Wow. Like a little over. Like around a thousand is probably where that one's at market value. Okay, so for thirty grand, you could get a thousand bucks a month. Yeah. Right, thirty extra. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, wow. Okay. You hate right. the house. <laughs> no, no, I love the house, but I, I don't like your plan, frankly. Okay. So again, what would you do differently? So what I would do is I would go refi my primary residence right now. I would mm -hmm. get a 30 year mortgage. I would probably do a cash out refi because I'm assuming you have the equity okay. and I would take that money and immediately put it on that side of the duplex. Keeping that property okay. vacant for 10 months is stupid especially yeah. since your return is so high, right? You're going to increase, Yeah. right? You go from a 20 to a 30 year mortgage, you take out a little extra debt. It's possible your payment doesn't even go up on your primary. Right. You take that yeah. 30 grand or take, maybe, maybe it gives you 17 grand and you have to find the other 13 somewhere. Mm -hmm. Invested in that house sooner, you get an extra a thousand dollars a month. You're, you're up. What? I don't understand. Yeah. I, I don't then get we're it. We're up and running. <laughs> And you're getting yeah. an extra thousand dollars. I never thought about that. <laughs> it's, it, it hurts my head, Dave Ramsey. Yeah. So that that's what I would do is I would go get that other side up running much, much, much sooner. And it sounds like you have an easy answer in your primary residence, which we've already agreed you're going to refinance into a fixed rate 30 year mortgage. Correct? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you'll be up a thousand. Well, you'll be up 800 bucks because there's expenses and all of that. When the having good a unit. side rents for like, like 1300 ish. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But I'm, I'm worried about that asset. That's the bad side. No, it's, it's just an, it's a thousand dollars sitting there that you're not picking up. It drives me crazy. Yeah. All right. And it's all cash flow when you, yeah, well, yeah. Like, There'll be some expenses, right? Cause you have a tenant in there and yeah. stuff happens, but right. Right, if it costs you rent it for a thousand, you're going to walk away with an extra $700 a month. It's silly not to do right. that. Okay. So that's my thoughts on that one. <laughs> Sounds good. I right. like it. All right. But it's, it's creative ways that I didn't think about it before. So. Ah, I've been in the game a long time. All right. So yeah. what, what else can we talk about? Cause that, th that's an easy answer. I think. That's fun. Um, how much cash reserves do you keep or recommend keeping? Uh, so when I had one house, it was 5,000 bucks. Um, you're at four okay. now. Uh, again, I don't know Indiana at all, but I, I wouldn't have less than 10 grand. Okay. And, I, and I would put that tent. I actually kept a separate bank account. It wasn't connected to anything. I had to physically go there, right? I shredded the ATM card, right? I wanted nothing. Right? Yeah. I, I do all that. But that, that's what mm -hmm. I would do for four houses. Mm -hmm. We have two banks that we do our business with. And I, I have one that is just like the most cumbersome bank to work with in the world. But they, like, I put our money there that I don't want to. Perfect. I like Because I won't log into them because it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> that, we think the same way. Excellent. Park it there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put it over there. I want it to be hard to get. Yep. 
Okay, good. All right. Um, so at what point do you, so right now, if we move out of, okay, so we do our refinance on this house yep. and then we get all of our units up and running. Yep. And then our goal is to move out of this property and make it a rental house. Yeah, like we course. bought it to be a rental. Yep. Um, and so when we do that, our five properties then or our four door or five doors at that point. Yeah. If they were paid for, they would replace my husband's income or very close. Okay. Think. All right. Dave Ramsey is still stuck. At in what point head. do you pay it off versus what point do you buy more units? Uh, so you're still in what I call the growth phase. You're in phase one, right? You, yeah. you're, you still need to be doing good deals, right? We talked about that earlier, good or great mm -hmm. deals. You still need to be positive carry or positive cash flow. Um, you know, you're 30, right? You're, you're a baby, right? You're yeah. going to live another 70 years at least, right? right. So you, you should be going out and getting 30 year debt on as many investment properties as you can that positively cash flow. Because what will happen is you go okay. from four to 10, right? Appreciation yeah. will happen. Mortgage pay down will happen. Rent increases will happen. And by the time you're 32 yeah. or 33, not only would, could you replace your husband's income, but you could replace your income potentially, right? So yeah. you're, you're, in the, you're in the foundation building business now. So buy more units. You're still young enough where you can work, even though his back hurts at 28, freaking guy. Stop it. <laughs> work on your core, dude. Do some sit-ups. Um, yeah. But in the end, um, you're still in phase one, right? Phase two will come when you can no longer find good deals, right? So in our book, right, since you've read it, right, we talked about mm -hmm. when we made that yeah. transition from eight to 80. Right. We, we couldn't find any good deals. So with the numbers you gave me, for example, right, let's just say that first house you bought at 78K. Let's just say appreciation yeah. happened. And for whatever reason, the houses were 150 now, but the rent is still 770. Right. That's kind of similar to what happened to me. Right. We bought it for 107, rented for 1100, went to 260, mm -hmm. but still rented for 1100. Right. At some right. point, appreciation could come to Indiana where it's you just can't find any good or great deals. That's when you have to make the choice. Okay, what do we do now? Do we pay off what we have? Or do we look to go up, right? Do we take the equity? Because now you're going to be sitting on $100,000 in equity per house, right? Given the numbers we just talked about. Do we move right. that into multifamily, right? That'll be the decision you need to have. But you're years away from having that decision. Right. That's what I think. And we like the single family aspect of it, but I guess that could change in the future. But yeah, again, if you like spreadsheets, let the numbers tell you what to do. Them. Yeah, I think single family homes are far easier. The drama is far less. The expense ratios are far less. I have no, I, most people should only own houses, only. Uh, yeah. but, but at some point, right, if you're going to do this long enough, maybe when you're 41 or 42, Indiana's 225 grand, but the rent's still 770. It doesn't make sense to buy another one. And you want to go bigger. Right. That, that, what, either that or you pay it off. Those are, great, those are great options. You're just not there today. Right. Okay. So really, we're like saving towards like your 20% down payments to do 30-year fixed loans while rates are low. Yeah. And it, yeah, exactly. After and we it, do the refinance and all that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and I would refi. Once you get the duplex up and running, which you're now going to do because you're going to move equity from your primary to that, I would refi all yeah. of the, I would go get 30-year money on everything I could. Fixed, no arms, no seven year arms, no portfolio loans. You're not until you get to the property 11 will you have to do a portfolio loan. You could go okay. get in the individual loans today. Okay. So move out of the portfolio and do. Once, once the duplex up is running, because the portfolio loan made sense for the deals you put together. Totally get it. I think you were smart yeah. to do it. But you don't have to stay in it. Once the duplex yeah. is performing, go refi all four of those get into 30 year fixed rate debt, your cash flow is going to go up. And if you want, you could take cash out and go buy property five and six. So you don't even have to save. That's what we did in our book, right? We bought three houses. Yeah. Then we did cash out refis. I was an idiot and I turned one negative, right? The alligator. Yeah. Run the yeah. numbers, right? Don't be stupid like I was, but use the cash, the <laughs> equity to buy property five, six, and seven. And then while you're saving, mm -hmm. then you can go buy eight and nine. You're on the path um, assuming you use debt correctly, you're, you're, you're in great shape. Right. How much debt do you carry on your properties where you're comfortable? Uh, well, when I was in acquisition mode, I'm at 70%. Uh, 
I don't like 80%. Okay. I like 70. I'm conservative. Yeah. Okay. Because it, I think if we, if we do a cash out, like refi, like we're at 20, per, like we're at 80% on them for the portfolio loan. Yeah. Again, I, again, you're, so do I don't know your down numbers. a little bit. Well, again, yeah. uh, again, just because you, just because I answered 70%, I don't know your market. If you can cash yeah. flow a couple hundred bucks at 80%, go for it. Um, yeah. I'm perhaps pretty jaded because I did invest through the 08 crash and saw people go bankrupt. Um, right. That's just my personal that's what we're trying to avoid. And I feel like we've done a decent job of yeah, that. Uh, and I just don't want to get overly leveraged in yeah. houses. You got to watch your market. I don't know Indiana at all. What part of Indiana, by the way? Northern Indiana. Um, like, we're literally in the middle of nowhere. Like it's like, a very small town. Like what's small? Um, like 10, we're near people? like, uh, I think it's like 28,000 is oh, our. That's pretty small. That's a town. Like city we live in. So I know Gary, Indiana a little bit that kind of northern mm -hmm. indiana yes so gary's on the west side of indiana and we're on the east side so okay. all right so rough okay cool all right we're north of fort wayne a little bit people know fort wayne um okay our little area of the world is up by like ship so there's like amish ship live in this area and like and like flea markets and all the things so okay all right well cool your grandparents might know about ship and i never Sip heard of, that's a that's a fun that name, that's a fun name to say in the quilt festivals <laughs> All right, cool. I'm sorry. I digress. Um, so I think we have a good plan. Some other questions you may have? Uh, we already talked about one. Okay. How fast is too fast to scale and we need to pause and get our duplex going? Yeah, I think Moral you need to, I think you need to pause sense. and re rejigger some debt and get the duplex running. Before you buy your next property, I want the duplex both sides rented. Yeah. Cool. We already knew that much, but I just was trying to figure out I like to know where we're going next. So I feel excited about cool. the plan. Awesome. Um, oh, have you ever done, this is interesting. Um, have you ever done seller financing off of the MLS? Yes. Okay. Several times. But okay. Because I've always debated that as a strategy to do houses as well. Oh, well, yeah. But I, I, we have yet to like find the right kind of buyer or seller. Seller, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, seller financing is awesome. It obviously takes a unique seller. Um, but there, there has to be mm -hmm. homes in your market that are owned free and clear. Um, and yeah, I, again, I will overpay for owner financing. I've actually done owner financing at 1%, right? The lady, okay. the lady wanted 115 grand for a house that I thought was worth 90 grand. I don't care what okay. the price is because I'm going to own it forever. So I told yeah. her, right? And she was like dead set on it. Like, I'm going to tell my family I got 115, blah, 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 blah. So I said, okay, I'll pay 115. But, you know, I'm only going to give you five grand now and I'm going to pay you the rest, of, mm -hmm. you know, at this payment, which, oh, by the way, worked out to a 1% interest rate. And she's like, great, I got my yeah. 115. I'm like, well, okay, great. Well, I got a 1% loan for 30 years. So fine. Right. Yeah. We both win. So you can't yeah. get creative, but you need, you need to find the owner. Um, I would tell your agents or whoever you work with, to, you know, to, to see if they can't ru run a search on free and clear houses. Um, Ooh, you know, I, yeah, yeah that, that's what something I would do. I don't know if you have wholesalers or in your market, uh, but they can, there's data out there that you can run on, on free and clear homes. And, you know, maybe you send out a mailer or something. There's lots of things you could do. Um, but yeah, owner financing right. is great. I've actually owner financed apartment buildings, not only houses, but apartment buildings. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. except that's free and clear. There's a lot of frustrated landlords, you know, a lot of landlords that are maybe 60, 70 years old and they don't want to do the hustle anymore. All you got to do is tell them, hey, you know what? Why don't you be the bank? I'll send you a check every month for cash flow and I'll take all the expenses. It's a great conversation to have, but you got to find the right yeah. person. Right. Um, oh, did you and your did you and your wife have kids while you were doing all this? Oh, that yeah. My one. Yeah. My daughter is one. just a little bit younger than you. She's almost 29. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because I think that experience is kind of interesting because I the people you read about. I don't know, like all the fire people that you, like the big names are yeah. so different in lifestyle than I feel like the real estate people that are doing fire. And so it's kind of interesting to read that story and that perspective. So yep. no, absolutely. it's a whole new game. We had a baby, she's seven months old Ooh, and it just like really, really <laughs> changes. I'm like, I can't paint houses anymore. Like not doing it. We're hiring it out. Can't. Yeah. <laughs> we tried with the baby and you just can't do that. Yeah, no, we, 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 uh, Teresa is her name. We, uh, we brought her out several times. Um, 
you know, when we were ratcheting back expenses, uh, she got all of her needs and some wants covered, but we didn't get any wants covered. Yeah, it's doing this while raising a family is uh, it's another angle, right? It's it's you can't it's, it's a different different mindset, right, than a bachelor or you know whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 interesting, but yeah, right, very cool. Yeah, um, this has been very helpful. Good. Well, let me know um, what happens Guys, next. Before we did the portfolio loan, and mm -hmm. it's their interest rates were really really good, so. I'm going to go shop around. Very, very so, cool. Oh, I do have a question too. Um, shopping for um, title, like closing companies and title companies, do you do that? And, okay. No, it's because some people say it saves money on your deals, but I'm like, I just haven't taken the time to do it, but. No, for me, it's a relationship business. I want to, I, I want to send most of my business through the same individual so I can call and ask for personal favors. Hey, I need a rush on okay. this. Or can you check? Like, um, I find a lot of off market deals so I can call them and say, Hey, can you run a quick title search off book for me? And they're willing yeah. to do that, right? Okay. If, if you shop around, you could save a couple of hundred bucks, but most of the title fees are standard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to be cheap and, and make everything about the mighty dollar, go for it. Uh, I think real estate's a relationship business and I will gladly overpay a couple hundred dollars each time for the favors that I get. Um, and then I guess it was interesting because I read your book and I like follow a couple other people that talk about like the relationship aspect being important. And so I actually net, net, bleh, networked with my first local person yesterday ah, and it was so helpful. Um, it's just fascinating to see like they have a few different rental properties they bought and sold over the years locally. And so, and she connected me with someone else that I'm going to do coffee with next week. Awesome. So awesome. trying to work on that because it's easy to stay in your spreadsheets, but I feel like you might learn about more deals and opportunities by oh, yeah. your, the people, your people. Do me a favor. I think I put it in the book, but why don't you take a personal goal to meet two new people a week in your market? I think you okay. will fundamentally change your business in a year. Cause think about that two times 52, that's a hundred people right now. Yeah. Just so we clear, cause a hundred might seem bad. This could be a real estate agent. It could be a title person. It could be an insurance person. It doesn't have to all be investors, but if your right. personal network is a hundred people strong, in a year, yeah. you will have deals fall on your lap. Seriously. I don't know if we have a hundred people here. Shush, <laughs> you have 28,000 people you just no. told me. <laughs> so take I'm that sure as a personal goal. Yeah, take that as a personal goal. I think you'll be impressed what happens in, in a very short time. Sounds great. Um, I should have came up with more questions because That's you're okay. a wealth of information, but this has been really helpful to think about. Um, very cool. Well, I'm always here. Yeah. You can always reach out if you get a big long list of questions again. Sounds, I probably will. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, I look forward I to that. I appreciate it. I look forward to that, Sarah. Again, check her out. Nerd's Guide to Wellness on Instagram. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Have Bye. a good day. Bye.